What's up, Quarter Pounders? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Wave Potter, and today I'm watching the new Yayoka song, original Yayoka song, Sparkling. And this is really cool because she actually collaborated with some other pretty awesome musicians. Yukihide Takayama, who we've heard from before, collaborating with her, and is also responsible for the arrangement. Her and Yukihide work together on this. Um, Rhonda Smith on bass and Derek Sherinian on keys, who is a former member of Dream Theater. So I don't need to tell you how cool that is. That's super awesome. Also, shout out to Amy Logan, who is a friend over on Instagram. And the reason I was able to get connected with Yayoka in the first place, pretty much. So thank you, everyone who worked on this. I can't wait to hear it. Pick it down. <laughs> Okay, whoa, I gotta hear that again. One of my favorite aspects of progressive music is unison like that between like guitar and bass and drums all playing in the same rhythm because it bolsters whatever, you know, it bolsters all of them when they're all playing together. Such a cool sound. And then the way it separates after that, it makes everything, you know, feel wider and more spacious. Really cool. I gotta ask, is the seven on the short symbolic for the time signatures? Because both of the odd time signatures I've heard have had some kind of seven, you know, <laughs> aspect to them. Butters up out of that unison. It's really cool. oh, awesome, Phil. And this offbeat ride too. It kind of reminds me of Neil Peart. Like this section. Like I'm hearing influences of Rush, uh, Dream Theater, and even Liquid Tension Experiment. Like just the way everything is is working in this. It's very interesting. <laughs> Trushy ish guitar. Okay, what the way I counted that part in my brain was like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, like was that like a five eight situation or 10 eight? These, this is crazy advanced for a 12 year old to be playing progressive rock, almost borderline metal with these guitar licks and riffs. Uh, again, liquid attention experiment and dream theater hold a special place in my heart because I used to listen to them nonstop while I was delivering mail for the post office. And so that music is so ingrained into me. And so I'm hearing all these influences. Same with Rush. Hearing all these influences, I'm so curious what she's been listening to lately that has influenced her to compose something like this. Like, I'd never, ever thought I'd hear a 12-year-old drummer playing this type of music. Back when I used to listen to it, I was like, man, these Dream Theater guys are insane. Of course, when I would watch their stuff, they were all in, you know, much older than me. So I was like, man, they've been playing their whole lives to be able to be this good. But Yoyoka's 12 years old 
and she's already playing at this level? Like, what in the world? I can barely fathom that. Gotta back it up a bit. That double kick is so cool with the guitar. Man, you can hear that can shred. Signature Yayoka move right there. This is another really cool aspect of progressive music is the way it can change up the feel on the turn of a dime like this. And like to be able to bridge that gap so smoothly, have such a, you know, good flow into your feel shift. That's really impressive. <laughs> style in her play. Another Oh the intervals being played on the guitar. So perfect for this style of music. Um just huge intervals and again that shift in feel into this 4-4 four, four more straightforward just like swingy. It's like 4 4, but it's got the triplet feel underneath on the kick drum. <sighs> Such a cool sound because a seamless transition. You can have two completely different feels right next to each other, but when you can transition that smoothly, it, it really, it's really impressive. I gotta hear that transition. Those last two sections it's getting such strong liquid tension experiment vibes from like the way it goes into this section that guitar is so Petrucci-esque to me um what's the song like it's also similar to that little bridge in YYZ like near the end before the last section where it's like you know the section where it's kind of like this. Anyway, it's also something... It's just such a nostalgic sound to me. It's, it's so cool. Okay. So much happening. I could pause this every three seconds, so be grateful that I'm not. Yes, this reminds me of the middle section of When the Water Breaks by Liquid Tension Experiment. The dun, dun, during that organ solo, the dun, 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 dun. just that triplet feel swingy. And then when it transitions again. <sighs> Epic, wide open. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking of 
YYZ in this part. It's very cool. insanity and i love how the music really correlates with what's happening in the music video like he's laying there on the floor and it's all like you know kind of wide open and epic but then the energy picks up and it gets really crazy again and he gets up it's like his getting his second wind or something i'm very curious what the story is behind the music video i gotta hear that transition again Wait, here we go. Just like down, the music is a little slower, more then it picks back up here. Really cool. It's audible storytelling. Those drum fills are so cool. Awesome guitar work too. Right here. Awesome double kick work there, but that part again just screamed Jordan Rudess to me, you know? The I can't remember what the song's called, but it's in like the Dream Theater's dance of instrumentals. It's like if anyone can tell me what that song's called based on that horrible humming, I would really appreciate it. But it's just so cool to hear all these different inspirations in a 12 year old's composition. Like I can't even wrap my head around how she's able to compose and keep up with this style of music. So young, like it's insane to me. Seven feel. Ooh, she's playing the vibes in here. Or the xylophone, whatever that is. That's so cool. Is that the the xylophone that Ellen gave her? Or didn't that happen? I can't remember right now, but 
That is so cool. Like, how in the world does a 12-year-old come up with that? Like, huh, insane. Absolutely insane. Great work, Yayoka. Great work, everyone who worked on this. Um, just such a great work ethic for a 12-year-old and just a desire to keep learning, keep improving, keep pushing the bar like this. Because this, she's obviously not getting stagnant at all with her practice. It's such a great combination of nature and nurture because she's obviously got some incredible natural talent. One in a billion natural talent. But also, she keeps putting work into improving it. She keeps having the humility... Uh, to learn, to say, you know, I don't know everything yet. I want to keep learning. That's so important to keep that desire to keep learning if you want to become a virtuoso. And she's, she is, like, she's hot on the trail to getting there to that virtuosic level where she can play anything that, that she uh, is faced with. So... I can't wait to see where this leads her, where this new kind of genre and uh, pushing the bar leads. It's so exciting. All right. Well, that's where I'm going to wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to pound like, subscribe, and turn on all the notifications so you know when I upload more Yoyoka videos because I'm a huge fan, diehard fan. Uh, like... It's insane, even after being able to see her play in person, I am still constantly impressed, constantly blown away by her level of skill. Like, I don't... I'm so grateful to know about her and that the, f the family was so kind to me personally, like... It's mind-blowing, so... Anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time.